Hi there, my name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to take a look at a really powerful filter in Photoshop, and that's Lens Blur. And the reason that I say it's so powerful is because you can actually use it in combination with selections that you've saved to your channels panel, and it can use those alpha channels as a depth mask. So let's see how that would work. I have an image here of a nice river in Colorado, and I want to selectively blur the background of the image. So to make this really simple, let's just first create an alpha channel. That'll give us an all black alpha. I'll tap G to select my gradient tool, and then D to select my default foreground and background colors, and I'll just drag a linear gradient in that alpha channel. All right, I'll return to the RGB or the composite channel by clicking on it, and then we'll choose filter, and then blur, and then lens blur. Now, unfortunately, I can't use this on a smart object. Lens blur doesn't support that, so we're going to be affecting the background. Now, I've just made the dialog box here a little bit smaller so that we can see and reference this alpha channel. So by default, when we go into Lens Blur, the entire image is going to be blurred because we haven't selected a source for it to use as its depth map. As soon as I select Alpha 1, now we can see that it's selectively having that blur applied. And this is different than, say, just applying a Gaussian blur to a layer and then using a mask to paint in and out where the blur shows and is hidden, because with lens blur, we're actually adding a lot of blur in the background, and then it's decreasing the amount of blur. So the blur is actually becoming smaller and smaller as it comes towards the foreground. And it really doesn't have anything to do with background and foreground. It's actually having everything to do with that alpha channel. So let's look at that alpha channel for a minute. We can see that where the alpha channel is white, we are seeing the effects of the blur. So the alpha channel works just like any other mask in Photoshop. Where the mask is black, it's hiding the effects of the blur. Now, if you've ever made the opposite alpha channel than what you wanted, you can always just come in here and invert it. But you can also do something really cool in Lens Blur, and that is you can tell it basically what shade of gray you want it to define as the area that is not blurred. So for example, if I wanted the gray area here to be defined instead of the black or the white as the non-blurred area, I can change either the blur focal distance by using this slider, or I can click to select the focal point tool and then just click anywhere in the image. So I'll click down here, and we can see that that becomes the sharp area, or the area where the blur is not applied. If I click back here, it's defining a different shade of gray as the area that doesn't get applied. So anywhere I click, it's going to define that shade as not having the blur, and anything in either direction, so going lighter towards white or darker towards black, will have the blur applied. And of course, there's lots of options in here. We can change the amount of blur, the curvature, even the shape of the blur and the rotation. If you had some specular highlights in here, we can adjust them. You can also add some noise. But for now, let's go ahead and just click OK, and that would apply that blur. All right, now let's get a little bit more precise with our blur. Now here I have these two foreground elements, right, the wheel sets, and I want to make sure that they stay in focus. So I can't just drag a gradient in my alpha channel or they will start becoming blurry before I want them to. So basically, if I think about this, I want everything that's in between these two railroad tracks to stay in focus as well as the wheel sets, but then slowly fade out so that by the time we get to this other rail car, it's going to be quite blurry. Now to do this, I think the easiest way is to actually create two separate alpha channels and then just add them together. So let's do that. I've already created a path around the wheel set, so I'll just load that as a selection. And then I might want to add just a wee bit of a feather, so I'll go into Select, and then Modify, and then Feather, and just add a very small feather radius. 
Then in order to create an alpha channel from that selection, I'll click on this second icon right here, and here's our alpha channel. All right, let's deselect that. I'll use Command D. And now I'm going to add a second alpha channel. And I want to make sure that I can still see my image, so I'll click on the eye icon here to make it visible. Again, I'll use my gradient tool. And then I'll just click somewhere near the base of the back railroad car, and then just hold down the Shift key and drag down towards this other set of railroad tracks. Now if I wanted to add just a little bit of blurring in the foreground, I could also switch to my paintbrush by tapping the B key. I'll tap 2 to make sure that it's set to a very low opacity of like 20%. And I'm painting with black in the alpha channel, so I'm just going to paint right along the edge here so that I get a little bit of blur with the lens blur. All right, now how do I combine these two alpha channels to make a single alpha channel that I can use with the filter? Well, I'll just command click on alpha 2, that's control click on Windows, and then keeping the command key or the control key down, I'll add the shift key and click on alpha 1. Then when I click on the second icon to add a new alpha channel based on that selection, we get exactly what we expected but if you think about it, white is going to show the blur and black is going to hide the blur. So I'll just do a quick command I in order to invert that. All right, let's be sure we've got the RGB or the composite image targeted. Select filter and then blur and then lens blur. We'll make sure that we've got the right alpha channel selected, in this case alpha 3. I'll switch my blur focal distance back to zero and uncheck the invert. And we can see now that there's a slight blur in the foreground, but there's no blurring between the two railroad tracks and the wheel sets are also unblurred. But then we get a slight blurring right beyond that, which continues to increase in the amount of blur until we get to the back railroad car. And that might be a little bit too much of a blur, so I'll just decrease the radius there a little bit and then click OK in order to apply that. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.